This is Theatre Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. It's been quite an interesting season on Broadway. Lots of great stuff and lots of sort of crowd-pleasing claptrap. So now, will the community, <laughs> will the community That's vote? It's, translation, terrible, awful yeah. shows, like legally blonde. <laughs> will the community <laughs> vote its hearts or its pocketbooks? We have three experts here to see and to introduce them. My co-host here in his pink shirt, Michael Riedel of the New York Post. I'm wearing this pink shirt protesting the um, um, exclusion of that great musical, Legally Blonde, from the nominees of Best Musical this year. So in solidarity of Orfe and Laura Bell Bundy, I'm wearing pink today. Welcome to Theater Talk. We're going to predict the Tony Award winners this year with a distinguished, I use that term loosely, panel of experts tonight. We're joined by Patrick Pacheco. Who, where are you working these days, Patrick? I can't. I'm unemployed and on the streets, Michael. <laughs> You're on New York One, Two, no, New one. York, York One, one. And, and the Los Angeles Times, right? Correspondent. With the circulation that's plummeting. Mm, along with all the others, yes. <laughs> and also another uh, journalist with a uh, newspaper whose circulation is drifting downward, Jesse Green from the New York Times, <laughs> who specializes in interviewing people, older people, people sort of on their way to the actor's home. <laughs> oh, I think you're going to get beat up not only by the cast of Legally Blonde, but Andrew Lansbury's outside of the club. <laughs> Those are wonderful, sensitive pieces you do with the wonderful older people. In so the what industry. are you doing reading them? <laughs> <laughs> and for a little hipster quotient, a little very youth, little, very <laughs> little. a little youth injected on this panel. What is this, a friar's roast? <laughs> Our friend I Mike. like your pronunciation of Orbel Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> She's related to Orfe. <laughs> and what do they have in common? Anyway, my name is Michael Musto <laughs> from the Village Voice, and I'm rooting for Pirate Queen all the way. That's right. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to Theater Talk. Oh, you know. All right, so we want to start off with, uh, what's the biggest category? The best, best musical. Best musical. Curtains, Grey Gardens, Mary Poppins, Spring Awakening. Now, um, Jesse, you are a shill for John Kander, well, another one of the older people that you <laughs> oh, so lo job. lovingly <laughs> profiled in the New York Times. You have a soft spot in your heart for Curtains, but can it win the, uh, the Tony Award? I don't think so. I think there's pretty much of a juggernaut going on. Spring Awakening is probably going to win that award. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? I can't tell you that. <laughs> it wasn't my favorite musical, but what it, was your favorite? Yeah, musical? what was your favorite? Uh, Grey Gardens. I think mm -hmm. Grey Gardens did for me most what a musical is supposed to do. I'm not nothing wrong with Spring Awakening. There's a lot of uh, wonderful new ideas in it, and uh, it's young and exciting. And I think Duncan Sheik and Michael Mayer are the two most responsible for that. Dunk Duncan Sheik, who wrote the score, and Michael Mayer, who directed it. And I think they'll both win. Not to and mention Bill T. Jones, who I think they would not have had a hit without him, and Stephen Sayer. And Stephen Sayer, who wrote it. Right. Yeah, I think there is this sense that of all of the shows that opened the season, this one was certainly the critics' darling. And whether that will translate into Tony votes, I would be surprised if they denied it. But by the same token, I wouldn't rule out necessarily Grey Gardens or even Mary Poppins. What? Uh, whoa. Yeah. I mean, what, I what, 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 Now, whoa, remember, whoa, Patrick whoa. swept the predictions last year. Thank you very much. <laughs> right, we so better, I, I, we I, I have to ask you, though, how is it conceivable in your mind in that universe. Mary Poppins <laughs> could possibly win? <laughs> because if Grey Gardens and Spring Awakening split the vote, it's possible that Mary Poppins, <laughs> which got some pretty good reviews, and also is, if if I were the Mary Poppins producers, I'd make sure that all the voters attended that show with their kids. Mary Poppins is not going to happen. <laughs> you were right last year about Lashans. That was a fluke. And, um, and pajama game. That was yeah, a fluke. pajama game. Anyway, uh, curtains is a very likable show, but it's very middle brow, candor and mid middle drawer. Uh, it has actual lyrics like "critics are bad, they make me sad" or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Grey Gardens is my personal favorite as well. Well, that's um, two of you. And I love right. However, well. I think some people don't even get that Christy Neversall is playing the mother of the character she plays in Act Two. It's a little hard for people. Spring Awakening <laughs> is going to win because it gives the illusion <laughs> of you being young and hip and exciting by embracing this musical about masturbation, incest, child <laughs> abuse, and bad hair. There's also the traditional issue, if you believe it, that the winner of Best Musical Award will tend to be the show that is most likely to tour and tour well. That would, that would be Mary Poppins. That would be Mary Poppins. It's hard to see how Spring Awakening 
Uh, what are they yeah. going to tour? Like Rathskellers? Do, do people do use that word? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to do it everywhere now. That I, I honestly think They're the built. Mary Poppins nomination is the award. Everyone thought it might have <laughs> yes. been Love Music. Yeah, yeah. But they went for kind of successful commerce. Mary Poppins over failed art. Love right. Music. And a Disney show doesn't win. Aida wasn't even nominated. No. Tarzan wasn't nominated. Beauty Lion and King didn't. won. Okay, well, but, but that, that was line, that was a flu puppets or no, something. That was extraordinary. Right, right. Yeah, but I think that Spring Awakening will do the will do the route that Light in the Piazza did, which is regional theaters. That's where it's going to roll out to. It'll roll. And yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, I was just going to say the problem with Great Gardens is it, like Spring Awakening, is a wonderful, innovative Act Two. Right. But then they have Act One, which apparently they did write Act One first, and then when Christine Ebersol came on board, they used the film to develop Act Two. But Act One is is very conventional and and essentially doesn't work. So you've got to sit all the way through Act One. <laughs> Oh, and then if you come back after intermission, you see the wonderful Act 2, which is a win. I liked Act 1, too. I liked Act 1, too. And I, yeah. Because I, I adore Act 2, but I wonder the, the circulation of your papers is plummeting. <laughs> <laughs> you liked Act 1 of Great Gardens. Nobody likes Act 1 of Great Gardens. And you're like, Spring Awakening? What's wrong with you people? Pardon. Did you notice like that three of the four Spirit. shows announced their tours within the last week or two? Yeah. Clearly pitching for those votes. Now, we all think Spring Awakening is going to get it. It's going to win. Yeah, it's going to be hard to deny it. The question, though, then, is just for the commercial aspect of this industry. Spring Awakening is not, it's doing okay at the box office, but not great. Is this a Tony Award that's going to sort of push this one over the top and make it a big hit? Uh, you know, I, they, they're making that argument, and they point to Avenue Q. Avenue Q is not doing very well until it won. The difference there is that Spring Awakening is very dark subject matter in a way that Avenue Q was not. It was a musical comedy, and it had that appeal, and Drowsy Chaperone, likewise, although it didn't win the Best Musical Tony. I, I think it will eke out a middling and respectable run, mm -hmm. a, and I think it'll, uh, along the lines, again, of Light the Piazza. It's a challenging piece. It's beautifully done, but I, no, I don't see it going on to a long run like Avenue Q, mm -hmm. uh, if it wins the Tony. Although dark subject matter is becoming increasingly more appealing but not commercial young people. Not commercial. Uh, well, yeah. All right. Um, you, think, what, you think it'll take score? Uh, absolutely, I think that's a slam dunk. Duncan Sheik and Steven Sato, they, they get scored. Yeah. Do they get Well, more? You're My Bruise is such a great song. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are they going to sing on the Tonys? This is everybody's it's question. Gotta be, it's got to be the bitch of living, right? Just the bitch of living. The, oh, of living? the bleep of living. You can't say you, bitch on? I don't think so. Well, yeah, yeah, actually, though, this is, this is another sort of interesting angle. Um, if you look at all these shows nominated for Best Musical, an important thing is to put a number on the Tony mm. Awards. Yeah. yeah. What can you do from Spring Awakening? What can you do from Grey Gardens? I've seen Christine Ebersole, who's wonderful, doing the yeah. revolutionary you number, but that number it. does no. not no. work no. out of context. Absolutely. You can do the end of Act One, the, the hated Act One, but that I love. <laughs> no, yes. they're not gonna Will You. Will You is it's wonderful. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous song. And it, it focuses on her, and that's what they need to focus I would bet, on. I would bet you Susan's job on Theater Talk. That <laughs> the show that will benefit most oh, from the Tony Tony cast is Mary Poppins. Absolutely. Oh, that's a, that's a big bet. <laughs> oh, you're being risky again, Michael. Thank you. Oh, Unless Grey Gardens does, this, does the number where the cats pee all over the house. Because oh, that's, that's a real show. <laughs> the raccoons. But I also think Curtains has some great set yes. pieces, like yeah, that yeah. big Piscataway, He Went That Away number, yeah. <laughs> which gives you this sense that this is a fantastic show from beginning to end, which it ain't. They should do the critics' <laughs> number. What kind of man oh, would take a job like this? That'll give him a lot of Tony Bryce. <laughs> yeah, right. With a cameo right. bite. Yeah, right. Is, right. Now, Legally Blonde was shut out of the nominations, as you said before. Are they going to get to do a number on the... No, no, no. That's no. the way it goes. No, no that's... No. And that's Although, I hear thing. Orfe may <laughs> be the host of the Judy Jackson. Well, the great thing there. is they did nominate Kristen Chenoweth, but they called her Laura Bell Bundy. So, <laughs> <laughs> it all works out. Right. Okay. okay, we go right. to Best, best Play. play yeah. uh -huh. The Coast of Utopia. Yes. Frost Nixon, uh -huh. Little Dog Laughed, no. Radio Golf. No. All right. I ask for honesty here. Oh, did, oh, oh did, honesty. I love yeah. Act One of Grey <laughs> Gardens. <laughs> and I love the first did two plays. Did all of you see all three plays of the Cozy Yes, yes. yes. Not all in one day, but yes, I did teacher, see Yes, teacher, I did. You, you, yes, you I did. Did you, did. Susan? Yes, absolutely. All three? Of course I did. Hmm. But I'll tell is you. Is there someone here who did? Is there someone here? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, a lot of people didn't yeah. see the last the last, the, the last play, because yeah. I went mm -hmm. to the last play, and there were rows of empty seats. But I was know, shocked. There, and, and, and people bought the seats and then simply didn't show up for them. But there's such a bunch of shocked. lemmings, they're going to vote for it anyway. Well, I think and they slept through half of it, and they're uh, going to vote through, for it anyway. The middle I, nine hours were amazing. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the, third, the third play was the weakest, unfortunately. Yeah. And if that's mm -hmm. what people still have on their minds when they go to mark down the ballot, I think there's a chance for an upset here. But apparently, since you say no one went to the third play, and the second play <laughs> was the strongest. That's true. 
I, I like first the first two. Actually, I All would right. love to see it go to Radio Golf. Do right, so you think it's strong enough <laughs> for the sentimental value of this posthumous award? To, I, don't think, to, I but I don't think it's strong enough to override the Tom Stoppard snobbery. Unfortunately, I'm Michael, do you go, think Frost uh, Nixon? Yes, can I'm win? going out on a limb here. Okay. I think that Frost Nixon will pull off an upset. I think that um, people are bored by Coast of Utopia. They may admire it. They may admire the uh, ambition of it, but I don't think they really like it. And Frost Nixon, which is not <laughs> a great play, it's a wonderfully entertaining, so entertaining. Yeah, people yeah. Do theater. Like, and really I think it. that is going to swing it for Frost Nixon. Well, that and plus the pl well. Michael, Playwright will come get to the me. Award. He didn't look like Cynthia Nixon at all. I don't get it. Cynthia. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry. It's a slam dunk for Utopia. It was longer than all the other three combined, and and that's that equals award. I'm sorry. Mm. Utopia. Uh, absolutely. Susan. Yeah, I think it's going to be Utopia. I'm sticking with my Good. friend Frank right, Langella right. all the way. Well, 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 Frank yeah, Langella is another yeah, one. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. I like how you the term. Yes. Let's go to leading actor in a play. Leading actor in a play. The nominees are. Boyd Gaines, Journey's End, Frank Langella, Frost Dixon, Brian F. O'Byrne, The Coast of Utopia, Christopher Plummer, Inherit the Wind, Liam Schreiber, Talk Radio. I think you just have to say, though, every single one of these actors is at the top of their game this season. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. extraordinary performances. Almost. Absolutely. Uh, what? Almost. And, and, and there were several almost. others who Who's could not? easily have been yeah. in the category. Well, I didn't think that was Brian F. O'Byrne's best performance ever. I think he's done others that he should have won for that he didn't. Yeah, if you were a little older, was, maybe you would have profiled. And I think there were other there were other actors who did superb work this and season. Bill Nye, Bill Nye, Bill Nye right. who Very could clever. well have been yeah. in that category. Um, I personally liked uh, Brian Dennehy yes. in Inherit the Wind. I thought he was he was really quite good. And Boyd Gaines, I really thought extraordinary. Boyd Gaines, is Boyd Gaines is extraordinary, but I really thought he was the support. And I think Brilliant. if they put him in the supporting category, he could win. Michael, can anyone yeah, take down Frank Langella though? As I think Nixon? he's got it, and I have to admit, I didn't love his performance at the beginning. To me, it was a little Dan Aykroyd Saturday Night Live. Oh, okay. Okay, but then by the time he got to the apology scene and uh, before that the uh, phone call scene, those were two transcendent moments, and he's going to win it for that. It's a slam dunk. He humanized uh, somebody everybody hates <laughs> by showing the slimy side and also showing some humanity the heart, there. Yeah. yeah, I think he's going to to win, but I think somebody if if he's upset at all, it'll be by Liev Schreiber. Yeah, I, I agree. Liev Schreiber is definitely uh, in 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 the running. I saw him in talk radio the other night for the second time, and the performance just gets uh, richer and uh, yeah. Even no, more, no, he's wonderful, but it's going to go to Frank. I agree. Leading Best <laughs> leading actress in a play. Yeah. Eve Best, A Moon for the Misbegotten, Susie Kurtz, Heartbreak House, Angela Lansbury, Deuce, Vanessa Redgrave, The Year of Magical Thinking, Julie White, The Little Dog Laugh. Julie White's show is closed, but she strikes me as being the, uh, the favorite. I, I'm getting that too. I'm getting that too. Really? I think she deserves I think so, it. I think so too. But I think uh, Eve Best was awfully good in *The Moon from This Begotten*. It was the only nod that it got, but it certainly was a well-deserved one. And I wouldn't. And Vanessa Redgrave is brilliant uh, as well in that one. Well, two show. of these five. I think just it's sit between there. the two of them. Two of the five literally just sit there and talk. Who? Uh, <laughs> Angela <laughs> and Vanessa. Oh, well, Michael, uh, you're so sitting there and talking. And I yeah, and am I getting a Tony? No. <laughs> um, Eve Best, most people said, was the best thing about the production, but she was miscast in the role. Yeah, I, I don't know. Susie that's... Kurtz gets the nomination for she's. Not Julianne Moore, so we have to put somebody. Uh, you know, should have been there. Marion Selda should have been yes. there. I thought yes. Marion was Agreed. terrific. Yes, yes. but I do yeah. think that Julie White is going to be the surprise of the mm -hmm. night. She's going to squeak in there and get it. She was the best. Uh, she was great. She was terrific. But I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I just think also the part was so memorable. Wh whatever you think of the play as a whole, you can really months later remember exactly what she did with it, and that's the sign of an indelible performance. I, I think. ran into uh, Julie White the other night, and she was at one of the theater district hangouts, and I said, "Are you?" campaigning for this award. And she said, yes, I am. Kissing <laughs> <laughs> babies. Even though the show is closed, she said, I'm going to be at absolutely everything, and I'm going to shake every hand. And I think people remember the performance, and she's such a winning personality. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be around, and she's very, very funny. Right. I yeah. think there is some st sentimental vote for the wonderful Angela Lansbury. Yes, I think yeah. so. They'd like to give her yet another Tony. but well, I, She would break some record, I believe. She would. Higher record. She'd break she would all actually break all the records, all the records. as the most honored. Mm -hmm. I think the four is yeah. the... Is Audra McDonald has that. And Audra McDonald. So history could be made.
All right, so uh, let's go to that best actress in a musical, Laura Bell Bundy, the yeah. Bundy. 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 <laughs> Christine Ebersole, Grey Gardens, uh, Audrey McDonald from 110 in the Shade, Deborah Monk, Curtains, and Donna Murphy, Love Music. Uh, Donna Murphy missed a couple of performances. Oh, luckily, she's <laughs> alone. <laughs> Just leave her alone. Why should she like sacrifice when the poor, her entire voice for her you? instrument? <laughs> I mean, just leave her alone. When People the poor do woman dies, you're going to say that about her. <laughs> That's right. you, She's you know, not who's there. Gonna win? <laughs> who's going to win? I think I, oh. it would be a crime if Christine Eversol yes, did not win. How could she not win? But her? I think it, it could go to Audra McDonald. Uh, well, I have to say about Audra McDonald. Every time she's been nominated, she's won. No, not for, not Marie for me, Christine. Thank, Thank you very much. You. <laughs> <laughs> she's wonderful in the show, of course, but Eversol has been credited with making this entire show. Yeah, it would be a, it would be, a it would be criminal. Yeah. She, the only she reason she might that. not get it is timing. She's had this in the bag for so long, the bag yeah, yeah. is getting a little tattered. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, despite the incredible competition, and by the way, the gunshot you hear is Kristen Chenoweth. Um, <laughs> Christine's getting it. I, I hear Kristen Chenoweth was beautiful. very, very upset that she was not. Well, I heard she may have turned down more some. Isn't life a bitter that pill? You were wrong. All right. So, so best leading actor in a musical? Michael Cerverus, Love Music, Raul Esparza, Company, Jonathan Groff, Spring Awakening, Gavin Lee, Mary Poppins, David Hyde Pierce, Curtains. What do you think is going to happen here? I'm, I think it's I'm definitely, I, I'll bet you, Michael, that it's going to be Raul Esparza. I agree with that. Yeah, I, agree. I agree. Yes. Because he's good and has been he's waiting around for a long time. He's great. He's number one. He's he's a workman. He survived uh, a working horse. He survived, he survived Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> he survived Chitty Chitty Bang. He plays <laughs> piano. What more do you one want? One note. People? So here's the career <laughs> path for he you. Came do as out. many bad musicals as you can in a row, <laughs> and then do and one then that do has one no orchestra. <laughs> and, 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 and also, he was really good. Yeah. And then your performance with the song being alive. He's yeah. scarily yeah. talented. That's the thing. Because David Hyde Pierce, I love him. I love him. I love him. But I think it's going to Brown. You're all wrong. It's going to David Hyde Pierce. I think so too. That was yep. actually what I thought. We have a bet, Michael. All right. Why do you think David Hyde Pierce? Because I went to school with him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you used to work for John Kander. I'm sorry, you I can't help it. You went to school with David Hyde Pierce, and you used to date Deb Monk. No yeah, wonder and, you're and a my <laughs> I'll say, by the way, David Hyde Pierce, because he is extraordinary in the play, in, in the musical Curtains. And also, I think that even though Curtains is not the greatest show around. There is some sentimental feeling for it. It was the last show that Fred Ebb wrote with John Kander, and they will want to honor it in some way, and I think you can honor it by giving the award to the leading man. Ah, all right. And, Best and that cinched it. Cinched oh, boy. It. <laughs> Best, well, they think you're the great prophet, I'll tell you. Thank you. <laughs> Best, the best, the little, Moses, how little they the, know. The Moses right. of the Tony Awards. <laughs> best revival of a musical, The Apple Tree, A Chorus Line, Company, 110 in the Shade. Company. company, even though last year John company. Doyle's production of Sweeney Todd shockingly lost to Pajama Game. Well, I think something this will fluffy. be the consolation prize exactly. for Sweeney Todd. And the but, other three stay. But let's ask Patrick, who is the only one in the world, in the entire world, who got this one right? Pajama, pajama game. game last year. <laughs> and pajama I'm Game this year, too. Way out on a limb here. <laughs> way out on a limb. Game. No, I'm going to say 110 in the shade. I think Patrick's right. It's going to be no. 110 in the shade. No, Why do you think it's company? Because 110 in the shade does not compare to Pajama Game in the scenario that you're setting up comparing to last that's year. That's that's quite possible. But I think that people vote their emotions. They vote what's most entertaining. That's the yep. argument for Frost yep. Nixon. Yep. And I think they may have been more entertained at 110 in the shade than they were. I get a general. Company. I was more entertained at Company. I have to tell you. But I'm just looking at the tone. I, I like I like a Company very much too. But I get the sense from talking to people in the in the theater world that company's not as good as Sweeney Todd was this no. production I think it's well, better. No. the material is it's oh, not. really? I it's thought not. it was better. I, I yeah. no I thought oh, Sweeney I Todd was yeah. better. I mean the company is a, d more dated. Yeah. yeah. But that all has to do with timing. If if they had been reversed, we'd be having the reverse conversation. And also, yes. It's interesting, though, that no one, no one is talking about a chorus line, one of the landmark musicals. Because it's because a it slavish a... recreation. Yeah. <laughs> and while the original kind of soared when it came to the two star turns, and I won't say what they were, this one kind of got clubbed in the ankles during the two star turns, even though one of them, one of them nominated them. I was delighted to see Charlotte Dambois get a nomination, even though she's not going to win. I'm glad that I thought she was pretty good. All right, revival, all right, of the revival of the play. Revival of the play. Inherit the Wind. Journey's End, talk radio, translation. If it's not Journey's End, yeah. then this entire industry should just shoot itself. Uh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, look, That's these, a little extreme. These, these were all good revivals. Yeah, but that was, shot, the only home run of the season for me was Journey's End. Yeah. There are a lot of triples, a lot of doubles. 
That that was it. Well, Everything well, about it. I talk see about a bad skepticism act on one. I talk about it. Disappointing <laughs> act one. I tried to leave, but it was so dark I couldn't find my way out. <laughs> but I'm glad I stayed because Act Two was a home run. I still think Translations was way better, but according to your Times poll, it has a two percent chance. I, uh, Translations I, was great, but nobody even remembers it. I agree with Jesse. I think Journey's End is is, is a total home run. And thing, also, let us be said, it's anti-war. Which is not well. It wasn't intended to be. R. C. Sheriff never intended it. It was not. That's as, yeah, absolutely but it, right. But it, but it is uh, perceived that way. It is perceived. perceived. No, but it was hard not to, but yeah. to. To look at it and just but, look but the at the sad thing about Journey's End, though, is it, I think they announced it's they did, closing June 10th. on the Tony. On the Tony <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there are more people on stage than in the audience. Can't they hold out for a <laughs> week? No, that's Corum Boy. Can't they? Oh, Corum Boy is fabulous. I think you're right. Uh, I like Susan. Corum Boy. I think that if Corum Boy had made it into the top, that would have been yeah, the upset that's over Coast Let's, no, let's, 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 let's elevate the discussion one second, though. Why is Journey's <laughs> End? Please. Why is Journey's End? Great reviews, terrific production, important play. Why? Is there no audience for it? Too depressing. People Perceived do as not a downer. want a total downer. People, there's no stars. Uh, people just do not want to see this crazy so show. So can you make the Great argument that, that in the time of a war, people don't want to see a play about a war? They want to see Legally Blonde. I think in this time of commercial juggernauts like Legally Blonde and the high price ticket and the sense that theater is an event, uh, even in peacetime, Journey's End would have a hard time selling, and that's really perilous for the. Do theater. you think Michael, if it had some tap dancing in it, it would? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're adding tap dancing, and uh, they're going to have Fantasia come out and sing a song. <laughs> they're they, doing they, anything they possibly can. They still want to see Wicked mysticism and themic tunes and mysticism. Anyway, let's do the special. <laughs> what was that? Where did that go? Instead of anti-war stuff. We want to see this family. All right, all right, all right. Okay. All right. Special theatrical event I want to get in. It's, Why? It's Why? up between, because it's up between <laughs> Jay Ooh. Johnson to an only first ventriloquist nominated and oh Michael Musto's History. Discovery. My Discovery and Kiki, Kiki and Herb. Her. I find them it, astounding. I thought the show them? was the most exciting. Did you write exciting. about them in your book, La Dolce Musto, Michael? Yes, I, I did. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I think they were just incredible. I, uh, some of the matinee ladies might not agree. In fact, they're still locked in their bathrooms over the show. But uh, <laughs> I'm afraid this puppet person might win because Broadway loves puppets. They're both wonderful shows. Yeah, yeah. I, I do want to get to director of play and musical yeah. because uh, there's yeah. some terrific work. Best direction of a play, Michael Grandage, Frost Nixon, David Grindley, Journey's End, Jack O'Brien, The Coast of Utopia, and Melly Steele. Oh, boy. Every time I see her name, I think it's Mel Melly Dill. No, <laughs> Melly's still a great oh genius, gosh. great English genius. <laughs> Um, who, who gets it? I think uh, Jack O'Brien gets it because of this masterful achievement of a nine-hour play, casting Coast it beautifully, the direction, the, 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 the sets. And by all, all accounts, a, a much better production than the original in London. I think there's no chance right. of him not winning. But I, I think David Grindley's work in Journey's End was amazing. Yes. And Michael Grandage as well. Michael? Coast of Utopia. I mean, that's a beautiful production. <laughs> and logistically, just to approach that kind of task and put it on there at all is amazing. And Jack O'Brien did a beautiful job. And it'll get all the design stuff as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, direction of a musical. John Doyle Company, Scott Ellis Curtains, Michael Greif, Grey Gardens, and Michael Mayer, Spring Awakening. I think Slam Dunk. Mayer. Mayer. Yeah. Yeah. Mayer. yeah. Mayer. yeah, yeah Mayer. Michael. I mean, it, it took a lot to get that show on and then to move it to Broadway. And he was the one who Eight pushed years, it from yeah. the very beginning. Yeah. And, you know, regardless of its merits, in comparison to the other good <laughs> musicals of the year. <laughs> and, and I liked it. I'm not saying yeah. I didn't, but I think people will reward that kind of stick to it -ness. And I and, profoundly and, hope they reward Bill T. Jones for choreography. They won't, unfortunately. I agree with you, but I think, it's, def I think it's definitely going to go to Mary Poppins. Oh, oh, go oh, 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 oh wait, Mary Poppins this year? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Mary Poppins herself? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to go to... For the statue dance? It's going to that dance, the dance around the scene. I'm not a huge fan of the show's but you have to give it credit for what it achieved in terms of this lustrous polish. Whoa. So okay. we, lustrous do, polish? Do we, do, we have another, do we have another bet, Michael? I, yeah, Bill T. Jones is going to win Spring, Spring Awakening. Awakening uh, he might be onto something, because if you remember, Spring Awakening had great choreography, but not much of it. I, very occasionally, the stage would have burst into this yeah, very that, innovative... Yeah, but living number is the most exciting thing. There's a lot of stuff with the people just standing with microphones. Yeah, but, I, but, but I don't think that you have to have big, happy, tappy numbers mm -hmm. to win choreography. I think no, that's I, what I'm, Bill T. Jones does. He gives you fluid staging. Did you he see? He clearly it? worked. Yes, <laughs> okay. first act. He clearly worked clo closely with with Michael Mayer in staging this. Well, but you're you're, you're speaking as a critic now, and we know what a fine critic you are. Thank but you. If, <laughs> if we're talking about prognostication, I do wonder whether the general votership 
will recognize what you're talking about, or whether mm. they'll be all dazzled by the lustrous polish. The jolly <laughs> holiday <laughs> with oh. Mary. Excuse all me. Right, all right, all right. We got to wrap up. We got to wrap up. I just want to know one thing. Yes. Orfe. Oh, Orfe. <laughs> <laughs> will she ever get a last name? <laughs> Does Orfe, because her press agent asked me to bring this up. Oh, yes, okay. Does Orfe, I know why you're Does Orfe have a shot at winning Best Supporting Actress in a Musical, Patrick? Yes. <laughs> she's I think just not, in, she she's not shot. in Mary Poppins. She's nominated, <laughs> but she has a lustrous polish. <laughs> All right, I adore right. Orfe, but I think the award's going to Mary Louise, Louise Wilson. She eats cat food. What more do you want? Right, right. Yeah. Jesse, Mary Louise Wilson. All right. Yes, okay. I say Mary right. Louise Wilson for Grey Gardens. All the way. All right. All right, uh, gentlemen. Mary it's Louise been. Wilson. Weird. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks, guys, for offering us your insights, such as they are. <laughs> Patrick Mary Poppins Pacheco over here from New York <laughs> now, and the wait LA a minute. Times. I'm a Spring Awakening fan. Please. All oh, right, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Michael Muster, the only sensible man on Pirate the panel. Queen. <laughs> from the Village Voice. And Jesse Green, your next profile before they die is. Uh, actually, Nixon. I'm having a